All right, welcome everyone to our Bike Walk Every Town uh, webinar, and we'll be discussing uh, our state funding uh, campaign to bring in a fair share of funding for biking, walking, and transit. Uh, we're from the Active Transportation Alliance, and uh, we are an advocacy organization uh, trying to make walking, biking, and transit better in the region. So welcome. So this webinar, um, we thank our sponsors, REI and UIC. And just so you know, we're recording this webinar and we'll be posting this on YouTube later. If you have any questions, if you're on the webinar live, you can either uh, use the comment box. It looks like that little symbol there. Click that and type in your comment, or you can email me. Uh, I'm at maggie at activetrans.org. And now I want to introduce our speaker, Barb Cornu. Uh, she is our campaign director here at, Act at Active Trans and Active Transportation Now. And she is a, the former district director um, at Congressman Brad from um, Congressman Brad Schneider's office in Illinois District 10 and she's she's got a lot of experience um, and I'm going to actually pass the uh, the micro the head headset over to her so she'll uh, kick off the presentation hi good afternoon so I worked for Active Trans in 2011 and 2012 as the Suburban Outreach Ma Manager and Judge just rejoined Active Trans this spring on the Walk and Roll the Vote campaign. Thanks for joining the call this afternoon. Um, I have been working on political campaigns and for elected officials in Lake and Cook County for many years. I am committed personally and professionally to the empowerment of people constituents uh, ensuring that everyone is involved in the political process and has a voice with elected officials. On Tuesday, November 6, Illinois voters will elect the next governor and state assembly who will shape transportation policy for the next four years and beyond. Active Trans has been working to educate candidates and voters since early in 2018 in advance of the March primary elections. We officially launched the Walk and Roll the Vote campaign this summer, and we have a mission. Our mission for the Walk and Roll the Vote campaign is by educating candidates and voters on transportation priorities in the 2018 statewide elections, we wish to win game-changing improvements for walking, biking, and public transit by securing support from the next governor and state assembly man members. So that's our mission about what we're up to. Why did we launch this effort? Currently, our region is far more car dependent than many of our peer city regions. This chart shows you very well in beautiful colors. The Chicago area trails peer regions in share of people who walk, bike, and ride transit to work. In Chicago, only 37%, right there in the middle, of residents commute to work on foot, bike, train, or bus. And you can compare this to 49% of commuters in Boston, in San Francisco and 54% of DC residents who use these forms of, tr of transportation. Far too many people lack access to fast and reliable public transit and biking and walking safety is improving only incrementally. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, wonderful. I'm just starting to hear a noise. Okay. <laughs> So the further of why did we, why did Active Trans launch the Walk and Roll the Vote was because we all know too many people lack access to fast and reliable public transportation. Construction of bike infrastructure has slowed here in the Chicago land area. Really, very importantly, the priority of the state, meaning IDOT, is that transportation spending mostly benefits those behind the wheel driving. So we here at Active Transportation Alliance see a really great potential for new transportation revenue and investment after the 2019, in 2019 post-election at the state and city level. Walk, now let's talk about the walk and roll the vote 
ROI, return on investment. As you all know, because you guys are all incredible advocates, public investments in walking, biking, and transit projects have proven to enhance the safety, health, sustainability, and equity of Illinois communities at significantly lower cost than traditional roadway projects. Studies have shown building infrastructure like sidewalks, trails, and bike lanes creates more than 10 jobs for every a million dollar invested, about 50% more than car-only projects. So Active Trans has developed a sustainable, Illinois Sustainable Transportation Platform. This platform is a two-page document, which we can send out at the end of the um, webinar. We worked with partners to develop the platform. It is targeted to elected officials. So we're going to go through the goals of the platform. IDOT currently sets aside a very limited amount of state-generated funds in support of walking and biking. Illinois contributes no annual capital funds to public transit and state operating funds for transit have been cut several times in recent years. So the first, we have three overarching goals in our Illinois Sustainable Transportation Platform. The first one is dedicated sustainable funding. We call upon the next governor and state assembly to commit to dedicated sustainable funding, and these are the subsets of it. We want a restoration of funding for transit agencies that was cut in 2018. We want to include a new bike walk fund in the state budget with an annual appropriation of $50 million, which is approximately 2% of the IDOT budget. We're asking for them to sign an infrastructure bill with sustainable revenue sources dedicated to transit, biking, and walking projects. And we also always add that we want at least 40% of transportation funds for public transit. The second goal, Illinois policy frequently prioritizes the swift movement of cars above more cost-effective equitable and sustainable modes of transportation and the safety of all road users. The implementation of the state's complete streets law has encountered problems and has not been updated for a while. So the second goal is we call upon the next governor and state assembly to reform IDOT to take a more multimodal approach. This includes everything you all have been advocating for, prioritization of the safety of non-motorized users, building more and better biking and walking facilities on state roads, revising the state manual to encourage slower traffic speeds in areas with high numbers of biking and walking, eliminating matching funds for local governments for complete streets, hopefully people are cheering, and establishing a transportation equity working group at IDOT. So that those are sort of the highlights of our second goal of of reforming IDOT. The state's transportation investments over the next four years will shape how Illinois residents get around for decades and obviously affect our health, equity, and sustainability of our communities. Experience in Illinois and across the country shows investments in walking, biking, and transit carry lo greater long-term benefits at lower costs than creating more space for cars. So our third goal is what we call champion transformational projects. So we call on the next governor and state assembly to champion transformational projects. We wish to develop cost-effective congestion relief and alternatives to driving, including better public transportation and rush hour demand management strategies, rather than just highway expansion. We've chatted about that the expansion of I-294 294 and I-290 and I-55 should, this, these expansions should be canceled. We also are advancing a vision for the planned reconstruction of North Lakeshore Drive and other pending major roadway construction projects. We feel that um, we should create a new transit corridor on the North Lakeshore Drive with dedicated bus lanes. So what we've been doing over the past couple of months is we actually have a petition that we have been sharing with just folks, cyclists, voters, people out there. Um, some of you have been passing it out. Thank you very much. Um, but this is the actual petition. We call it a Bike Walk State Fund petition. And the very important part is what's in bold, where we call upon the next Illinois 
and governor and general assembly to commit to the fair share of state transportation dollars. This has become our, our sentence we use everywhere and this is what we say to everybody. So this fund should be used for new biking and walking projects and corridors where the most crashes occur, many of which are located in low income communities and communities of color. Historically disinvested communities with the greatest barriers to biking and walking must be prioritized with any new funding. So we need all of our ad advocates' help in getting this petition out and signed. It will be on the website this week as a blog. It's there now. I'm just looking at Maggie. It's on. It went on yesterday. So we will send it to everybody um, after this as well. So it is on our website. So let's just talk about a little bit what we've been doing this year. Um, Active Trans hired a former state representative, Elaine Netgritz, and her colleague, John Amdar to really help guide Active Trans about educating and lobby state assembly members. Um, thanks to a lot of you, the first success we had was the Dutch Reach Act. We worked with State Representative Theresa Ma and other advocates collaboratively with the Secretary of State on revamping the road manual and the exams bicycle safety content for drivers and bike riders. So thank you all for your support in submitting witness slips and Maggie really pushed that out. It worked. The bill, as you all know, passed with bipartisan support in both houses and was signed by Governor Rauner this summer. The second um, success is the Bike Walk Education Schools Act. We worked with State Representative Sonia Harper and other advocates. Again, thank you for all your support and submitting witness slips for the bill. This bill passed with bipartisan support in both houses and was signed by Governor Rauner this summer. We'll talk about this one a little bit down the road, but hopefully you've been following all this and been very involved and thank you for all of the work that you've done. So this summer, Active Transportation Alliance introduced the Illinois Sustainable Transportation Platform to business leaders in the Chicago metropolitan area. And we learned from them, even though we probably felt this, we learned that top talent are demanding more transportation options and they expect to be able to safely bike to work and to possibly have convenient transit options. So this is what we learned from them. Businesses want to be in places that offer healthy, sustainable transportation options because workers want this. And they do feel that investing in biking, walking, and public transit is key for attracting top talent. So we're really um, working with them because we now know that business, we feel that business leaders can help by supporting local and state funding for the transportation op options that we need here in Illinois to be competitive and to grow our economy. It's going way too fast. So one of our um, strategies is to leverage our relationship with the business community in order to magnify our voice with elected officials, right? So Active Trans has invited business leaders to call upon the state to invest in dedicated funding, pedestrian, bicycle, transit, and merging shared use mobility options. And this summer, Active Trans assembled a high profile list of CEOs, presidents, founders to sign a letter to be presented to the gubernatorial candidates in October. So that's to Governor Rauner and to Mr. J.B. Pritzker. Um, and we were shooting for folks to sign this letter that um, might have some name recognition with those folks. So we have a full letter and the letter has been signed by 27 folks, business leaders in Chicago. And these are major employers representing thousands of jobs in the Chicago and area in business. And they're unanimous and they were happy to sign this unanimous in calling for a reprioritization of transportation funding. And they have that this exact wording that you see on the chart where the business leaders call upon the next Illinois governor to commit to and to ensure, so this exact wording, you're going to you're going to be able to say this in your sleep soon commit to allocating a fair share of state transportation dollars for a new dedicated bike walk which is about 2% and ensure IDOT prioritizes the safety of all roadway users roadway users over vehicle speed and throughput including the incorporation and in state funding of bike walking and transit facilities and state roadway projects so they felt and they said this in the letter that their collective success as leaders of large and small companies is dependent on attracting top talent and ensuring that they, along with customers, clients, have quality, affordable transportation options to reach their businesses. So they are signing this letter where they ask very directly for the support of these goals to Governor Rauner if he's reelected or to Mr. J.B. Pritzker if he is elected. 
Um, so you can see that we picked out um, the high priority plat uh, plank of the platform to ask folks to sign on to. They didn't sign on to the entire two-page transportation platform. We focused on the most important part, which was we need new funding for biking, walking, and transit. And everyone said yes. So, as we've said, we've been working this year on Walk and Roll the Vote, advocating with community groups, business groups, and we've started, we've been identifying and working with offic elected official champions to persuade them to back our pat platform. This is all what we call 501c3 work. Um, this is what we do on a normal basis. But this summer, late this summer, I'll just say the beginning of September, we launched Active Transportation Now. So this is a view of our new web, a separate web page, a separate um, website for Active Transportation Now. Can you guys hear that noise in the background? Which allows us to work it's with... It's gone. Oh, good, because we're in a conference room here and they're working next door to us all of a sudden, so I apologize. Anyway, so we launched Active Transportation Now, which allows us to work with candidates running for elected office. This new website will be live in October and will focus on state assembly candidates. Next door. So we have a new logo, which is beautiful done by a woman here named Anne, Active Transportation Now. And having this new Active Transportation Now 501c4, it allows us to tell, specifically tell our supporters how the candidate's position align with, aligns with ours. It also allows us to recruit and connect volunteers to selected state legislative candidates who we wish to cultivate as bike, develop a relationship with and cultivate as bike walk transit champions. Active transportation now for us as a 501c4, we are not going to endorse candidates per se. We're not going to donate money to candidates, and we're not going to get involved in controversial races. Now, that we can chat about later, but we're, we're trying to do this very gently, and we're building relationships with everybody, bipartisanly. Transportation, you know, is a very important issue for everybody. So this is active transportation now. <clears throat> so one of our strategies is to get our elected officials, people running at the State House and State Senate on record as to their, their positions on our issues. So we sent out a State Assembly candidate questionnaire to about 100 state races, all the people that we could find in public documents, um, emails to, to their campaigns. Um, and we sent it to 100. Our questionnaire reflects the 2018 Sustainable Transportation Platform. So all the questions are from the platform. Our responses will be shared via our new website along with our organization's policy positions. And we, again, just so you see the difference, we sent the questionnaire to campaigns, not government offices. So this is um, a little heavier of a lift, a little more difficult to do. So all of our advocates, and we are going to send this questionnaire out to you after the webinar, all of our advocates can use this questionnaire, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're attending public meetings or visiting with candidates and campaign offices. And we may need your help from advocates to encourage different representatives slash candidates to complete the questionnaire, which I'm going to get into in a moment. So we, for each of these races, well, for many of these races, we have lists of supporters and email contacts that we're going to be reaching out to to encourage them to get involved. And this is what we're all about. Okay, so how are we deciding who we're going to get behind? We're going to provide just support. We call it soft support to, you know, four to six state assembly races. We, we, we have a big target list of 30 champions that we work with on the legislative side. When we're trying to push legislation, we've whittled it down to 10. We're going to choose four or five. How did we do that? We looked at who sponsored our bills in 2018, obviously the Dutch Reach and the Bike Walk Education Schools. Are folks incumbents or are they in a contested race? There's a lot of races that aren't contested. Um, what are the important bike, walk, and transit initiatives in the district? So do they know our language? Do they worry about the things we worry about? Are there safety concerns, be it fatalities from Vision Zero or just, you know, concerns at crosswalks at, in front of schools because there aren't um, crossing guards? Um, is there high economic hardship so there might not have been investment in the past? 
an important one, number of active transportation supporters slash members in the district, and then a geographical balance. So this has been um, a really good way to think about our legislators in terms of our issues and who might be champions and be helpful to us. And they're all really wonderful people besides. Okay, so here we are. We have something called volunteer opportunities for advocates, members, supporters, people that have ever biked the drive and everybody that's ever signed a petition for us. That's a lot of folks, right? Um, we're going to be starting this whole thing literally next week where we're going to be sending out a big kickoff, what I call an action alert. Everybody uses the word action alert differently, but where we're going to ask people to get involved and we're going to get this launched literally next week. We are going to be encouraging advocates to volunteer in campaigns, meaning where they can go and sign up at a campaign office and go hang out and do phone banking or knock on doors or data entry or something fun. We're going to encourage folks to attend public forums that we're going to let people know about in coffees. Yes, this is all on social media. This is really easy to get two people that they're different candidates or having a public forum and Obviously, they all want membership to be increased. We're going to maybe invite candidates, um, advocates, not we, you, advocates, and all the people we're going to invite to join this effort, encourage candidates to bike, walk, or travel by transit through the district. I know Teresa Ma is doing this next week. She's doing at her own. I'm down. Um, she's going to be biking through her district. I know there's a walking kind of a tour, and what there's a race where people are going to walk across the district by biking, walking, taking transit in a car. So um, different elected officials, candidates, supporters, advocates are coming up with a lot of fun ways to get our issues out there in a fun, active way. Okay. So is that pretty scary? So our campaign calendar, just so you can see it's for the state, not just ours, there are five weeks in October where campaigns are really working. They really need, they love having people walk in and say, I'm here to, you know, send letters to the editor or knock on doors or make phone calls or data entry or talk about issues or just let people know that I'm a cyclist and I'm worried about whatever's going on in my community or I need better public transit here. So the month of October, there's a this is the perfect time where campaigns have offices. Early voting, which is, you know, the way of the world these days, starts October 22nd. So it's sort of like you have to catch people with, that's why you're bombarded with things about campaigns, um, because people can start voting October 22nd through November 5th. There's something called GOTV, that's called Get Out the Vote, um, final weekend push by campaigns. So that's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, those four days where campaigns just love having folks walk in the door, bringing coffee, donuts, driving people places, hanging up signs, whatever. Um, and the election day this year is Tuesday, November 6th. Now, before, well, let's go back one, my Tim. Before we get to ac activities in 2019, so what we're active, trans active transportation now is going to be sending out um, this week is sort of uh, a primer of why political campaigns matter to us. And we frame it in civic engagement, your vote matters, having relationships with elected officials, bringing issues to the table, bringing things to folks and, you know, and to people that are in office or people that are running about our issues in a very positive, um, upfront manner is all part of what we're all about. So we are civic engagement is we really feel a critical part of ensuring that elected officials commit to this fair share of state funding for people who bike, walk, and take transit is that they hear from us. They hear from not just active transportation, or all the wonderful work Maggie does, or all of you advocates, but everybody out there. Um, and you guys are the most, you know, wonderful advocates, and I'm, it will be interesting to see what you think. Anyway, so we built, launched Active Trans now to build relationships with state candidates running for elected office and to secure a seat at the legislative table in 2019 advocating for sustainable active transportation funding. You'll see I say a lot of the same things over and over and over again, right? Um, so because we've sent out this questionnaire, you know, 90 to 100 candidates, um, we're going to be posting it and why 
we really sent it out because we wanted to raise awareness of our issues, highlight what's going, raise awareness overall, highlight issues, and then allow us as constituents to hold elected officials and accountable once they take office. Um, so this is all going to be um, launching literally next week. So it's going to be a five week. And we already have had meetings with all these different folks that are our champions and they're thrilled to hear about our issues they fill out our campaign our questionnaire quickly and i mean it is very hard to get people to do these things i will say but people are doing this kind of work um, candidates are paying attention to active transportation issues so that's great all right so looking forward advocacy activities in 2019 once we make it through this um, election cycle our normal work continues which is meetings with newly elected state officials and people that have been incumbents have been there for a while um, focusing on you know what's going to be happening will be their uh, capital bill what what's the best way to get our issues is it you know just all those different com conversations that we need to have the second piece is our involvement with school boards to push forward bike walk education the act that we passed in 2018 and working with school boards and school advocates and ptas and other folks and we're going to need help to do that to get this on the radar of everyone so those are two big issues maggie continues all of her work bike walk every town for upcoming elections, municipal, city, um, February 2016th and April 2nd, so all the different communities. And then all this work that we've done, what we're doing, because this is all new for Active Trans, we're doing this concurrently in parallel at the same time, whatever, with the city of Chicago Walk and Roll the Vote campaign. Mm -hmm. And Active Transportation now will be doing all this kind of work, getting to know folks, getting our issues on the agenda of aldermatic, uh, aldermatic folks, candidates, and now that we have such a huge mayoral election in Chicago as well, with the same dates for elections, February 26th and April 2nd. So um, I, the next thing is I just want to say thank you to all of our, you, committed advocates and that we really need to be heard at all levels of government. So we really, really appreciate and thank you, Maggie, for inviting me to give this presentation to um, into this Bike Walk Every Town wonderful effort that you all participate in. Now, can you, we'll be right there. Maggie's just um, clicking on something. Up oh, here. Okay, we just had to switch head headsets real quick. Um, so um, we wanted to open up the floor for questions. Feel free to type in a question in the, um, in the comment box, or if you want to unmute yourself to ask Barb a question. She's a wealth of knowledge, so um, she, and I do have a question for her that, um, so I'll pass it over to her to get started, but please ask away or you can email me, uh, maggie at activetrans.org uh, and I will relay the question to Barb. Um, and before we get started with the, the Q&A, uh, I did want to mention, so on October 27th, um, we're going to be hosting our regional uh, suburban Advocate Summit uh, in Elmhurst this year. So I hope you can join us. It'll be on Saturday and we'll dig more into this election advocacy as well as uh, getting how to get projects implemented. And then we'll be also offering uh, a training to those who haven't, um, who aren't familiar but with the Bike Walk Every Town platform and the different strategies we have that to push um, biking, walking, and transit projects forward in local communities. So please join October 27th. Please, please register. I'll send out the registration link to that. Um, so does um, before I before uh, I've got a I've oh, got a question. We've got a Maggie question. Okay, Barb. yes. Hey Barb, this is Patrick Smith. Wait, I'm I'm gonna um, hand over the headset to Barb real quick. Oh, okay, sure. Hi, this is Barb. Hey Barb, this is Patrick Smith in Barrington. You and I spoke a few years back yes, nice. about North and Northwest advocacy. Of course, I'm all about Northwest and North advocacy. So, um, so. I, 
So one of the I have a few questions that I jotted down as you were talking, and yes, I was clapping. I was <laughs> looking for the clapping uh, emoticon or emoji uh, as you were asking for it. Yeah, I'm really excited about what you're talking about. Very excited. Right. I mean, this is exactly what probably all of us on this call want to do and do. Uh, some of it already. Uh, one question: JB's position. Do you know? I mean, we uh -huh. Governor Rauner has um, has passed or has signed. Uh, a number of legislative initiatives that Active Trans and others have been behind and created mm -hmm. with the legislature. Ron or signed them. What's JB's position? Do you guys have any perspective? So we do, and this was put on our website a while ago. So I joined um, Active, rejoined Active Trans in May. So this was work that was done before. But we sent our uh, Active Trans gubernatorial candidate questionnaire to all of the candidates for governor during the primary, and we got a response from JB. So he really did seem to understand our issues very well. He did not comment about the fifty million dollars, but he set because nobody will commit to you know what the actual dollar amount but he said yes to most everything and he said as governor I plan to promote and this is on our website so that's why I'm reading it to you but okay. I plan to promote alternative modes of transportation like biking and walking I will work with the General Assembly to identify their legislative priorities around this issue most importantly I will fight to secure federal funding to help supplement state efforts so he seems to get it um, what Active Trans did this summer in conjunct and then he answered yes to everything on this questionnaire and that was the only one with words. Oh, well, here he went. He, I'm sorry. He has one about transit. His comment was, Illinois' role as a transportation hub for the nation's critical component of our economy as nearly one-third of all fr freight traffic enters or originates here. I will prioritize a comprehensive 21st century capital build to build the infrastructure we need. So so that's cool. Um, we did, Active Trans did meet Kyle Whitehead, who's our... Um, communications guru and does everything with everybody he um, met with a group of folks um, Sierra Club Illinois Environmental Com uh, Council two or three or four other different advocacy groups about sort of transportation issues MPG was there and and they met with the policy person for JB so JB has heard this via his policy person that was in let's say it August so we're going to be delivering this letter to um, Governor Rauner and Mr. J.B. Pritzker literally mid-October with it very specific um, so you know we have we're hopeful okay that's good to hear and know and sorry I didn't check my aunt myself on the website oh no no this was happened a while ago so we'll send it out again okay. I'm writing down the three things we're gonna send out the the blank questionnaire for the state assembly the Illinois state transportation platform and now JB responses right I'm just looking at Maggie saying yes we'll send excellent and the online petition we have four things to send out okay we're, we're taking notes here that was um, so two uh, two Additional questions, they're somewhat related and, and they may merge into one answer. Okay. Well, the first one is local yes. as opposed to state, right? Instead of mm -hmm. the assembly, what about the local uh, people? I was just at a meeting last night. Barrington is looking to raise, to implement a 1% sales tax. Other communities have it. Some are home rule jurisdictions. Some are not. We are not. So there's a referendum next in, in November in the same election to add a 1% sales tax. For what uh, purpose? And then I'm going to repeat the question. So infrastructure. Okay. For all infrastructure. Cool. Okay. It, well, infrastructure, but when okay. I went at the meeting, it's obvious that they're focused on roads. And Perfect. the police this uh -huh. week multiple times told me not to ride my bike on roads in town. Right. So it's for roads. It is not for bikes. Right. So talk about local engagement as opposed to state. And the second kind of related question is, how do we talk with or work with, because I, I know you were talking about volunteering with people, so how do we talk with candidates who we, we know don't support what we're trying to accomplish here, um, or we suspect, because the office, I'm speaking specifically about the 26th district, our representative, um, who th this office does not historically support. It's a corp, it's a uh, conservative Republican office focused on money and corporations, and uh, so, that's their voting base. 
and they don't support bicycling and alternative transportation as an office, as an institutional office. So Never you're mind about, the candidate himself. All right. So the 26th district, the state rep district? Dr. McConchin, yeah. McConchin. Ah, so you're talking state. Yes, here it is. You're talking yeah. Senate. I'm sorry, Dan McConchie, the state senator. Okay, to the local, and which is always the heart of the matter when it comes to everything that goes on. Um, I know that you're all trying to build complete streets policies in Barrington. My memory is bad on this and whether or not that's ever happened in Barrington. Patrick, I know there's been conversations at different times, but the, the first approach is to get a conversation about complete streets so that people, start be elected officials at the municipal level, start thinking about dollars that are going to be um, raised should go for all users of the roads. Um, have, can you help me on complete streets in Barrington? I just don't remember. It's there are a lot of talk, not a lot of action, and okay. it's limited. Well, I should say okay. a lot of talk. Some okay. talk, very little action. Okay, so that's what we're all about, and we need to build a community of folks in Barrington that understand what complete streets mean, so that you can ask and bring that forth to your elected officials. Um, but mm -hmm. it needs to come from citizens in the community. With the lead, you know, of Maggie and all all the tools she has are amazing in Bike Walk Every Town, um, and so giving people the tool, people, voters, residents, citizens, people in that community, the tools to promote these with the local elected officials works. Now, the other approach is that because we're working with the state folks, the state senators, the state um, assembly, uh, state reps, they do have relationships with their communities, with their mayors and with their the aldermen or the village board people with the presidents, depending on if you're a village or a city. And so it should come from both ways. So um, Dan McConchie, you're saying, is who's your state rep? What number? Who's your state rep? Your state senator is McSweeney. Dan McSweeney. Okay. Just give me a number because I have this list. David McSweeney? Yeah. Okay. All right. He's um, been non-responsive when I've yep, tried yep, to work right. with him. Okay. So we sent him a questionnaire. So the easy lift here is that I would love your assistance to call his his campaign office or legislative office and saying, hey, Active Trends sent you guys a questionnaire. We just would love to hear your thoughts about transportation. And now, see, I'm going to... So, and that's to start the dialogue. Now, I know you have so many supporters of biking and walking and obviously the east-west connections and all the challenges, mm -hmm. right? And I know you guys have done a great job because I've been to your... I just don't... I'm not on top of it right now, so... I'm learning about aldermen in the city. This is horrible, but anyway. Um. Well, our, our uh, town board or village board president did fill out, I believe it was the Active Trans Complete Streets oh. uh, or questionnaire Perfect. in the election when she ran a year, two years, three years ago. And um, yeah, I guess seeing Jeff's question, that's a great question, Jeff. Um, so she answered all the questions and most of them were positive answers except i think for the complete streets answer somehow or another i know i it was a rogue answer if you will she said no i don't support complete streets okay how, how do you answer every other question on this in a favorable way and then answer that one unfavorably i i didn't well, understand it must be she doesn't like people telling her what to do with legislate or not live with her ordinances right. and zoning and things like that people you know a lot Certainly, of people don't like that. okay I've, yes i um, well, I think it's called keeping at this. Can you share the, her, the mayor's response to the, do we have that or if you it was something I got from active trans, right? It was oh, on the, you came it was from on us. the active okay. trans website. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. data that you guys gathered. So I am going to be reaching out a, a constituent did. I'm also on the board of right, Illinois. Ed Barsati got a question from a guy in town who was just buzzed by a big truck on Lake cook road this week. I'm going to be reaching out to both uh, McConchie and to Sweeney Perfect. to try to engage both of them. Now that I have this as well, I will put this onto the agenda to talk with them. Perfect. But it really comes back to the question. Uh, I mean, sure, I can ask the question. Active Trans sent you this, this questionnaire. We want to hear from you. But I know specifically that McSweeney has been non-responsive when I've reached out to him in the past. And the predecessor to McConchie in his office, I met with him a couple of times and yeah, I mean, he it's lip service. There's no action, Okay, really. so Dan McConchie has somebody running against him. I, I think that I have my little chart with me. It's, I hope it, yes, uh, it's I hope Tom, it 
Tom George's. I don't know who that is. Ah, I've okay. sent him a request. I sent because we're doing this bipartisanly. It's we don't yeah, worry yeah. about people's parties. We just get it to as many emails that we can find on the campaign side. Um, anyway, so we sent it to Tom George's um, and Webb's uh, email. Tom George's for Illinois. So you can look him up. So he oh, well. he might be an interesting person for you to connect with. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Thanks for All that right. lead. Okay. You're welcome. Sorry for taking up the airwaves. No, uh, no, you're making you us all think about how to make this work for real people and real advocates. It's the whole point of this. Okay, next question. Are you planning on doing advocacy for local candidates for this April? Well, um, see, yes and no, okay? So what Maggie does with Bike Walk Every Town is to give tools to help people to do local advocacy. So I'm not per se doing it. Um, but you never know how things may change. <laughs> um, can you ask me more a follow-up question? Oh, that's Jeff. You're from Wilmette. I recognize your name. And are you going to the wonderful open house about biking and walking that Active Trans and Civil Tech is having at, I think, your village board tonight? Oh, good. A smiley face. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right, someone's typing. Yep, mm -hmm, we're waiting. Yes, I guess there is something about um, um, uh, crosswalk folks at schools. Is that what's on that topic, on the agenda? This is so hysterical. OK, we have a new question coming in from Patrick Smith. Oh, another question, OK. Okay, why don't you do that? So you have issues about crosswalk and crossing guard. Okay, so one of the reasons I'm most excited that I rejoined Active Trans is that when I heard the data point that five children every day in the state of Illinois, I shouldn't say I was excited, but um, five children every day in the state of Illinois are hit by cars near their schools, walking or biking or getting off the bus or whatever, to schools. Just that one fact alone makes all the work we do so critical. So why do the people not want, help me out, why don't people, is it money or intergovernmental? Here we go. Yes. Every day, and I'm just looking at Maggie, make sure I'm saying this correctly, every day five children are hit, not killed, but hit by a car of some sort as they are walking to or from school or biking or maybe getting off a bus, but within a mile of their school. It's in all of our... When I share that statistic uh -huh. yeah. locally, yeah. Uh, people don't really seem to care. Oh my God! And, and you know why? And you know why? And no. yeah, I'd love to have a citation. I've seen the number too. I've heard it. Uh, uh, I've heard it before. Um, I think the reason is in in because in Barrington has it happened in Barrington? We don't have five kids every day hit in Barrington, really? so they don't okay. care. Right. Right. But there have been kids hit mm -hmm. walking and biking right by the high school. One of whom last year got a concussion. Ah. Because he was hit by a person driving a car. Yep, we now know how so, but critical I, I think that is. They just don't seem to care, and parents are asking me about this because I'm on the bike, the local bike and pedestrian yes, committee. You do it all, and yeah. So I'm trying to do more, but it, they won't. They won't listen. And as I said, the police are telling me, biggest advocate in town, right? Uh, don't ride your bike on the streets. They tell you not to ride your yes, bike literally. on the, certain the streets or police. just no, on, on the every streets. street. Into, do not ride your okay. bike. This on is the all coming back to me. I, I I thank you for everything you've done over the years. This is all coming back to me. How um, interesting the community is on these issues. So I think maybe okay. We so we've looked at different ways to frame biking and walking issues, and or not we we watch other organizations that do survey not surveys actual research about how to frame these issues. And it's no longer about environmental issues. It's now about sustainability and building communities. It's all of, you know, how communities feel 
and whether or not people want to live in them because people are welcome that bike walk and take public transportation. I know at Barrington, you guys, the public transportation isn't there. But there's sort of a new way to chat about this. And we're always looking at ways to frame these little emails we send out or the research questions, the questionnaires we uh, um, send out to elected officials and others. Because we have to capture more folks. And to me, it's been, I, I don't know about, um, it, it has been really interesting to learn, talk about it's the sustainability that communities need to be sustainable and so many more people want to have transportation options and just not the millennials it's it's really everybody and it's out in the suburbs and it's in the cities and yeah your area is not as you know so you have a very much more dense area like in Wheeling where they're doing TOD stuff and it's a suburb and good schools and all that stuff it's more and we're Barrington, but you have potential to have more infill and people biking and walking, just like any community. You know, people that retire don't want to move out of their houses. Now I'm really getting off on a tangent, guys. But <laughs> No, because, Barb, I mean, I, yeah, that is a focal point. In town, uh-huh. on Route 14, we have a uh, an assisted living community uh-huh. right in the there village. Okay. And they were they there was walk a proposal. Safely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And there was a, and there's a, a park right nearby. So they could be bringing their grandkids yep. Yep. potentially That's to right. that park yep. or otherwise walking on their own to the park. And there was a project that was uh, shot down earlier this year to reroute a road because of car crashes, because people don't drive their cars well, go figure. Mm-hmm. And that project was shot down in part because of land they were trying to take from the library, and that didn't fly with the library board. But I think, okay, and good. from my perspective, I expect that, okay, we'll move past Barringtonville. Um, I, I, I will su- suffice it to say that it is not just the us who wants to ride bikes and walk. It's everybody. It's called it's people. It's everybody. It's the we 8 all... to 80 crowd. It is that's the, the 8 to 80. Right. That's, that's exactly right. The other thing that is about drivers. And Bill, if you've got a question, ask it. I'm going to go on mute. Bill, Bill, if you've got a question, then ask it. He's guy on Bill? chat and on oh. chat. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the other thing that's interesting is all this work that we do, we have to bring in the education of drivers, of car drivers, and that's why it's so great what we did this Dutch Reach thing. It's not that we're just educating drivers, but it's going into the code, and it's going to be on the driver's license test, you know, one of the questions, and it's going to get people thinking about I'm gracious. There's an actual way I could be safer when I open my doors, when I'm driving, when I'm parking, etc. So I've always said that, we have to do as much advocacy with people that are in cars all the time because there's going to be a lot of people that don't get out of cars. But, you know, that's changing, too, with Lyft. And everything is changing with uh, autonomous vehicles and the shared mobility. So, all right. Who else has a question? I have the police issued. Okay. All right. Any other questions besides the one thing um, Maggie asked me about that we can close on is just for general tips when you see candidates, elected officials, your representative, when you meet somebody, there's three key things that I'm sure you all know, but they're always important to remember. Number one is always being helpful in educating candidates or elected officials. They are there representing us and they don't know all the issues. So we should always be helpful and provide education, data, people are really into data, as you all know, to the candidates and to elected officials. Always sort of have an ask for folks. Like, I know that sounds horrible because we always talk about bringing the community together and coming up with what the solution is, but that would be an ask, bring the community together and talk about these kinds of things. But it's good to have a definitive ask. And then, you know, things that we're going to leave behind. And this is why we're going to send all these questionnaires. You guys can always give us feedback about our materials. But when you're with an elected official or a candidate, you know, being at the coffee shop or actually going to an office um, to meet somebody, it's good to have a one, two page kind of leave behind handout, one pager thing. Okay. So here's Maggie. Uh, I just wanted to add about... uh... For local election advocacy so we have a webinar on our website that Kyle Whitehead de- did uh, earlier in January about um, just tips on approaching your elected officials and setting up meetings and I will send that link out as well because it's a it's it has a lot of great information in it and we also uh, talk a bit about 
for local elections, we, we did develop a questionnaire uh, for municipal uh, elected officials and candidates uh, that you can pass out to your local, um, the, th those that you know running for office. So this would be um, next next year, early next year, starting in January. So we would love to encourage all of you to, to do that and get involved in your local election um, because there's, again, 284 communities uh, around the region. That's why we count on you guys as local experts. So we'll, we'll be, we have a lot of resources to send to you. Um, so be on the lookout for that and we'll, um, be discussing more of this on October 27th during the, the Bike Walk Every Town Summit in Elmhurst. Uh, so we'd love to see you there and we'll keep this conversation going. So um, thank you everyone. Our emails are there in case you want to get in touch. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.